And that's what a handshake is. It's establishing rapport and dialogue. Because it's the beginning of a dialogue and it's the end of the dialogue. That's how we open and we close. Those are the bookends of culture. I have been able to see it, just like I never thought I'd see a black president. How the symbol really started was that right at the end of the era of slavery, even those who may not support Barack Obama certainly taking this moment to reflect on the historic nature of what has happened. So it's a way of reaffirming kind of a culture also when you meet someone. A handshake was a way of saying trust. That's when Barack Obama and his wife sang the husband and wife with their new It's wonderful. When he got elected, when when they did the big party and he did that, it was just a sense of like, ah, finally. You know what I mean? Because like our ancestors and our grandparents never thought that an African American would finally be the president. So this is like one of a kind, you know? And I saw him and he was just like, when he did that, he was like, hey, we made it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a big cape taken off of his back. But you know, it's it's like, it's amazing that 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 happened at that time and a time when everything is changing and black president and you know what I mean it's it, it was beautiful to see it's time for some news you can't use and really time yes. for a national conversation Please. a conversation I didn't think we needed to have but apparently we do this ladies and gentlemen is called a fist pound or if you really want to go into the accelerated class what is that that's DAP, okay? That's when Barack Obama and his wife Boom. sang hello That's to one nice. another. A husband and a wife with their little greeting. That's Wonderful. But a lot you know, of people I'm confused. That and I'm wondering, are they really trying to say something more? Yeah, well, are they, could they even be jihadists, what? perhaps? <laughs> I think Obama certainly made it when the when the president first laid it. In. I mean, it certainly was front page, but as is true with most of American culture, it starts somewhere else before the elites uh, pick it up and start and start doing it. And I think here's clearly it didn't start at that level. It started, uh, you know, much more on the on on the on the on the streets and a lot sort of in hip hop culture. <laughs> First lady did a fist bump and let us know they cared about the people. to We Act Radio, WPWC, 1480 AM. Visit us online at weactradio.com. All right, here we go. Show me, show me the handshake again. All right, so what does that mean? Just it mean love or we do it for an agreement or anything. Okay. So, I mean, you want to do, do the handshake for certain people? Yeah, yeah. certain people. All right, so it's what? It's just, just your your crew or whatever? People we be with. People you be with? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so who want to do, do the handshake with me? Which one of y'all ain't got sweaty hands? All right, so I'm going to do it two times. Do it one time slow and one time fast, all right? All right, all right then you're going to have to show it to somebody else, okay? All right, so here we go. Oh. <coughs> and touch my elbow like I'm touching your elbow, all right? And slide your hand like you're the coolest dude in here. 
Peace. 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 All right? All right, this is the peacemaker handshake. All right? All right, it's me and you going through all kinds of together, up and down. But if we stick together, we can make peace. Man, you like that. All right, there you go. All right, let's see if you can show this smile. Now, if you pay attention, you got it all the time. Why we do this when we do the handshake like this? Why we do this? What that? What is oh, what's that? Love. Love. That's that's love right there. That man, I, I really fuck with this dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's my man. But if he just I, right, I might be like, you know, he all right. But if I don't mess with him at all whatsoever, you know what I'm saying? But you don't want to beef with him. So if he extends his hand, what you do? You just go like this. Respect him. Say I, I hit him like this. <laughs> I be like this. You know what I'm saying? Him, everything has to have has to has to have a, a meaning to it, you know. And a lot of times we don't even attach the, the, the purpose behind it. We just do it automatically. But that's culture. You know what I'm saying? That's culture. What would you say? What's culture? Culture is like basically. I don't know how to put it to death. See, it's hard to say yeah. it, right? Culture is how you do things. Culture is the way you walk. Culture is the way you talk. Culture is yeah. the way you eat your food, you cook your food, the way you dress. It's how you do things. And that simple as a handshake is an extension of our brotherhood for those that we share culture with. been around long before Obama, you know, so that was probably around in, in the caveman days, you know what I'm saying, like, caveman couldn't communicate verbally too much, you know, he had to use his hands, and that's what Doc is doing, is using your hands to communicate, so man, when a man talk, a man uses his hand to communicate, so Doc is just an extension of that, so as hip-hop came about, you know, they was wearing the big chains, the big earrings, they was like, hey man, what's up, what's up? shake five 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 you know whatever break and that's why you know people paying attention to it but that don't mean it hasn't been around before hip-hop symbols and signs of that nature so it goes back to egypt you know what i mean africa and the, the, the symbols and the signage of Egypt, you know, transformed over to America with the slave trade and with, the, you know, so it was really our own form of communication for a long time. We weren't able to talk, we weren't able to uh, speak our, our dialect, you know, when we came over as slaves. So it was like sim symbolism and uh, hand gestures with, with our way of communicating. And so, you know, it's, it's the same thing today, you know what I mean? We, we see each other, we belong to the same tribe. And that's our way of showing love for each other when we see each other. You know what I mean? During the 60s and 70s here, as we were becoming more appreciative of different cultures, um, the black power sign, which was the raised fist, became a hand sign. And it still follows today you'll see in american culture uh, rap artists doing this and to a lot of people it meant black power that's the that's how the symbol has been interpreted but how the symbol really started was that right at the end of the era of slavery um, there was the underground railroad which was built and many times the underground railroad there were tunnels You'd go through developments. You'd you'd basically be hiding as people would be transporting slaves from the south to the north or even to Canada to find their freedom. And so, so silence and being undercover was really really important. And many times when when slaves were being transferred out to get to their freedom their sign of gratefulness, their sign of acknowledgement to each other was a raised fist, which was ultimate expression of freedom 
because as slaves, their fists were chained behind their backs or shackled to their legs. And just the mere act of being able to raise your arm into a fist was a sign of freedom. So it, it didn't have to do with power. It was, I'm a free man. I can raise my hand and no one says anything to me. I love all y'all. I love y'all. All right? I love y'all. Love you back. Thank you. Well, if you grew up in the black community and you understand a lot of symbolisms, they go on. You dap with one of them in a negative way. Gangs use their own kind of structure, fingers, and this, colors on their head. But it, it brings about solidarity. Comment. Comment. Like some of the handshakes that I do on stage derive from what I know in Chicago from gang culture. That's where I grew up around. Handshakes was a way that you let somebody know that you were part of that tribe, part of that organization. Well, I brought some of that to my band, but I couldn't do the official, like, handshakes because that's disrespectful to the organization that, that I was a part of. police officer for 40 years. Uh, my career spanned uh, Chicago, Illinois, Los Angeles, California, and Prince George's County, Maryland. In those 40 years, uh, 32 of those 40 years, I worked some form of organized crime, uh, gang intelligence, or um, a gang unit. become the Bloods until around 1974 and 1975. What happened was several uh, Vietnam veterans who grew up in Compton were also members of a gang called the Pai Ru Boys or the Ru Boys. The name Bloods was a term used by African American GIs in Vietnam where they used to greet each other like, what's up blood? So that's and the original founders or the gang members of the Pai Ru Boys or the Ru Boys were all um, uh, former Marines that uh, saw combat in Vietnam. I was drafted in 1966, two years after I graduated from high school. And at that time, it was a lot of uh, turmoil. The voters' right bill was just passed in 1965. There was still racism in this country, even in Vietnam. So we called it the pound first. Now the DAP came with different additions to that pound, you know and through the various wars. And that's how that was. And I mean, like I said, that was our comfort zone. The pound, you know, at that time, that was our comfort zone. If we didn't have anything else, and we had that. Hey, what's up, my brother? What's going on? Hey, home? You know, so, I mean, that kept us together. Any handshake 
is a form of greeting, and gang members are no different. They have their own way of handshaking, wherein the normal public doesn't know what what it is. Normally, when they shake the hand, it's it's in the form of representing the gang that they're in. Somehow or another, during the course of that handshake, they will let each other know that they are a member of that major street gang and to communicate to rivals. In other words, some form of disrespect. Uh, but most importantly, they use nonverbal communication so law enforcement will not be able to decode what they're saying. County is little neighborhood crews rather than national gangs. Other than like MS, the Bloods do come down from Baltimore. They do set up, you know, in areas here and recruit people. But a lot of these kids go to prison. And then that's when they join the Bloods. They join these street gangs. When they get back out, they claim their neighborhood, but they still have that affiliation with the Bloods, the Crips, the Gangster Disciples. But they're also claiming Walker Mill, you know, Seat Pleasant or wherever they were from. Since you were 13, how old are you now? 23. 23, so that's 10 years. Yeah. Do you have a rank? I was third crown. Third crown? Yeah. That's a pretty high uh, rank within the Latin Kings. Yeah. That's good. Well, I started in New York. That's a bloodline over there. Okay. Got the light side, you got the dark side. I was under, under the royal lines and all that. So, it like different sets and everything. Okay. And I started messing with the Diablo tribes, different tribes and everything. Okay. So, so yeah. what, what tribe do you belong to? Those are the Royal Lions. The Royal Lions? Yeah. And what borough are they out of? Or is that is that the largest? It's a bloodline. That's the bloodline. Yeah. Okay. So are you active here in, in Maryland? Yeah, I had, I had the green. Like, they had given me the green from New York. Start my own chapter up here. Okay. So is that what you did? That's so what I did, right? Here. Okay. Explain what that tattoo means to you. It means Langley Park Kings. Langley Park Kings. Yeah. Do you have any other ink that tells people that you're a Latin King? Oh, the crown right there? That's for the ADR and the Almighty Latin King Mason. Okay. And, and that's a- for the rank. The crown on your on the side of your face is that's your rank? Yeah, third crown. Third, crown. third crown. Yeah. Okay. But it's on, your, it's on your right side. Why is it on your right side instead of your left side? Up there, we, like in Chicago, the bang, they hold the flag to the left and everything. Mm-hmm. But it's like, we came to an agreement. We ain't going to dis- disrespect the rat the right or the left. Okay. So now we don't go by left or right. Okay. Which is, you feel me? It's just... Okay. Do the Latin Kings have a handshake? Yeah. Okay. Would you be willing to show it? I explain. That like, would like come up, then we come like this. Mm-hmm. If I'm with the right and all that, and go like this, bring it back three times, we go right here and like that, without like, like bringing it together. That's for, you feel me? They were spanking it for the whole nation. You know, we got kings and queens. And then, like, everyone got to know these handshakes. If that's how you know, like, it's like a lot of rules and everything. Like, you got to know the handshakes. You got to know your oak. You got to know all that. Like, the prayer when you eat. It's, it's a lot of different things you got to know. And if you don't know this, then you they're going to tell. They're going to put you on a cycle. It's like a calentone. It's like, that's like when the meetings come and then someone, like, points you out. But then you, you'll get hit. Okay, so it's, okay, that's that's the 
explain that crown right there. It's the ADR, Modere. Modere? Yeah. And what, what does a Modere mean? That means a Maya King Nation. That's, that's, that's like, you gotta say that, that's again respect and all that to, to your manitos and manitas. Can you throw up the five point star for us? Okay. So can you explain what each point means on the, on the star? Love, honor, obedience, sacrifice, and righteousness. and you're dealing with letters, it's just like in the alphabet, you have capital letters and small letters. Well, in, in the gang world, we refer to those as uppercase and lowercase. For instance, if I'm going to throw up a lowercase c, it's like this. If I'm going to throw an uppercase c, it's like this. If I'm going to throw an uppercase b, it's like this. If I'm going to throw a small b, it's like this not to distinguish this from what other people might think this might be, this is also a lowercase b. Dad, Roland, Siski, Crip, C's up, B's down. And for our bloods, all day, we don't like y'all. Slobs, bricks, y'all know what y'all is. BK hot nuts, without anything red, you're officially dead. And that's why I bang. Uh, there, there was a video that you saw of uh, the Crip Walk, and pretty much what the Crip Walk is, it spells out the word Crips, and it may spell out their particular set or individual gang they belong to. So what they'll do is they will dance, and by looking at their foot movements, they will be spelling out who they are and what set they represent. D. East. Roland. Oh, I gotta see that. Six point star. Six point star. Love. Life. Loyalty. Wisdom. Knowledge. Understand. Sex. Oh, I'm from DC. Give me that if you know about that. One time for my boys in a black hat. Yeah. We don't shoot, we just scrap that. Give me that, two fifths in a fight back. I flip it over, red blood, you could write that. It's no violence, we just do it like we like that. It's dop it up, high five, down low, down low, you too slow. Yeah, my Keyway Galloway played this beat one day. And I was like, you know, that's a nice beat. I'm like, we gotta do something really nice with it. So I thought about all the things that I've been through, you know, far as like the violence and things like that and all the things that was going on. And I was like, we need a good song to teach people to dap it up instead of shooting each other. So that's how the song I did came about. Where we live at, you know, it's always somebody getting shot, somebody dying, somebody getting murdered, you know, and a lot of people beef for all the wrong reasons. Uh, it, could, it don't take a lot, you know, for somebody to get shot or somebody to pull a gun. So I was like, you know, we need something as an alternative to teach young people how to, you know, to, to find different ways, different avenues of dealing with problems instead of violence. Y'all heard about the guy who got killed in the bottle shop around the corner? Mm -hmm. uh, you, think, you think he shook his hand before he killed him? You know, cause that would be cold-blooded, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. That would be cold-blooded to shake dude's hand and kill him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you a real killer, you shake a dude's hand and then kill him. Really yeah, but it happens, though. But not with us. And our culture, that's not part of our culture. Because when we shake hands, it means something, don't it? Like, yeah, for real, if you don't even mess with dude, you can tell by the handshake. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? He give you a little weak-ass prank, little, little, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know? And that's where y'all need to start recognizing the value of your culture. And once you start recognizing the value of your culture, maybe you start recognizing the value of yourselves. And maybe when you start recognizing the value of yourselves, you recognize the value of your collective. another person, right? If I meet another person, and I don't know where you're from, and uh, I don't know where you're from, I don't know what's about you, you know, we may do a handshake. 
you know, to say hello, a greeting, and the traditional, for, you know, traditional means of a handshake, right, is a person putting their hand out to say, I have no weapon, right? I don't know if you know that traditionally that was the traditional meaning of a handshake, was to, to show that you had no weapon and you're safe. You know, puts your hand out, their right hand out, and then you shake, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I may see you and I may know you all my life, but I've been, I've been in contact. I may say, hi, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm doing fine. You said, fine, sir. Good, good, good. I mean, just play it off because... Yeah, yeah, that's the awkward. It always gets a little awkward when you got somebody reaching for the hug and then you coming for that's the dab right. and then it's like that's the... Right. That's right, that's right. You just yeah. got to play. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the, um, the two of the guys that imitate Obama. And there was, he was going around to people. It was Saturday? It was a Saturday night? No, not Saturday Night Live, but it was two guys they were on, on some uh, show, uh, Comedy Central or something like that. They're two, uh, two African-American comedians. And they were showing how he goes around. And when he goes around, he meets uh, non-African-Americans. Hello, sir, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, how are you? Hey, what's up? He'll meet someone who's black. It'll be a little more formal, a little more informal. Mm -hmm. But again, that's, a, that's an example of a cultural language. A couple of introductions with the chat here. This is John O'Rourke. Nice to meet you, John. Mr. Ian Roberts. Nice to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you. One eighth black. Afternoon, my octoroon. Come on, bring yeah, it in there. Tuck that. I'm in there, dog. I'm in there, dog. I'm in there, dog. What's your dog? What's your dog? Cut him in there. I'm in there. All right. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, nice to meet you. Come on, there he is. Boom. <laughs> All right, very good to meet you. All right. Here we go. And the reason why we do that is because there's always commercial and industrial factors that are chasing you down, trying to copy what you're doing. Again, like I said, like if Neapolitan pizza or champagne, right? There are always the commercial factors that are trying to capitalize on it, right? So you've got to keep it moving. The improvisation, you've got to always change it and moving, right? It's always what's new and what's got. So the handshake will change, just like anything. It'll continue to morph over time. So when you see people like the Obama fist bump, what the minute that was done on television, and then it was like, that's no more, right? It's yeah. just like a style. It's, the style will change immediately because it's no longer signifi sig signifying anything other than you watch television. Another one. Another one. Uh, we pull back. Like oh. Back and snap. Right. And snap. Well, it was a, a, a form of greeting, companionship, relations. If a guy was having a hard day, you would say something like, oh, come on, man, you know, get, come on, knock it off, you know, you, you, we can get through this, you know? I had no idea. Back then, guys used to wear their caps backwards. Well, now I see everybody wear their caps backwards. It doesn't have anything to do with race or anything. And, and I'm like, man, I remember even coming on The Price is Right. <laughs> People used to come down the aisle, Give them five, and people be looking all strange. Now everybody come down the aisle. Old, young, you know, they come down the aisle giving everybody a high five. You know, so I, I never thought I ex experienced that, but I have been able to see it, just like I never thought I'd see a black president. I go into meetings on Capitol Hill and where, you know, I fist bumped a member of Congress, this little bump and, you know, how are you, Congressman? Uh, so it is, it is, it is supplanting the, the formal shake, I think, handshake in a lot of, in a lot of places. It's really sort of taking over. I think it's ridiculous. They trying to identify. You want to identify, get us some jobs, get us some affordable housing, get us something on substance and not that and then go home and, and vote against our interests. this and then we breathe together it's, it's just different stuff it is contagious you know hip-hop guys or actors or uh singers and stuff like that they do handshakes when they meet other guys and you might catch on like oh we should do that handshake you know 
and, and then vice versa. You know, we might do a handshake that they want to use. It's like a best friend type thing. You just make up handshakes and just come in, and then we just do it. That's yeah, another one. Yeah. You know, that's simple, huh? What? Which one are you remember? doing? No, um... I don't remember. <laughs> well, I mean, the fist bump is not just is not something that's just black. It's young and it's hip, you know. So that's what it meant to me. New generation coming in. <laughs> Usually skaters do, um, it's like you kind of, you, you do this and then kind of, that's usually what skaters do. Um, with friends, more complicated. At first we was just like messing around and then like one day he was just like, all right, let's make up a handshake for real. I used to have like waves on my head. So like my head was very wavy and like each time he would see me, he would always like swipe my head really smooth. And then he cut his hair. So like, that's why we really kept it, because like he got waves as well. The ideal that, that those on the right saw this as a negative terrorist fist bump, something that they were doing to each other on college campuses, on the corners, all over, really sort of further alienated the Republican Party from the growing voice of, of of younger voters in this country and it's and you know I don't want to put too much weight on it but it's little things like that which have fundamentally hurt uh, Republicans and their ability to sort of speak to younger more diverse audiences because it, it, it speaks it says look these people just don't get it And then I and I do like this, and I sprinkle, and do like that, <laughs> and that's that's the way we always greet each other. It's for my little circle, but like I found it getting more popular and more popular. So it's like people come up to me and they, you know, what I mean, and I think that's a way that I open the conversation. Like, okay, this guy knows me, he watched me, he saw me before. What's up, man? They be like, man, what's what's next? What project you working on? Or Will you perform tonight? Or what time your radio show come on on Sunday nights? You know what I mean? And what's going on? What's this? What's that? So I think the way we greet each other now is part of our culture on how you can open up and talk to different people. Everything that we did on The Wire was reality-based. We filmed in the neighborhoods. Those weren't uh, sets. They were locations. So late at night, I'd look around and I'd see what the kids were doing how they were communicating, what kind of handshake, what they were wearing. Then you call up the costume people and you say, you know, like, um, you know, there's too many, there's too many people with long white t-shirts in this scene. They're not doing that anymore. You know, they're doing something else. You just always got to keep watching. We talk to people. I mean, we go into jails. I still do that. I was in the DC jail two weeks ago talking to a guy that um, did an armed robbery. I wanted to listen to him talk, what he would wear, all that stuff, and his hand gestures when he was talking to me, the slang, all that. We did that all the time on The Wire. We had, we, it wasn't just that we had, we were in with the police, we were in with the underworld too. The environment that I grew up in, you saw these kind of things. This person getting shot, yellow tape dead. This person dead over here. This person selling drugs right here by the trash can. They're putting a stash in the building, running over here. People putting up shooting on the corner. So. I was already adapted to that atmosphere. 
but it was away from it for a minute. And then when I got the role, it was like, okay, I'm back in my element, but not as that much hands on. So when it goes on, after they say, cut, I can still be living. You know what I'm saying? Versus the real street. Bang, you dead. somebody comes up with a new handshake. So yes, we have our own style. I still kind of had one that me and another guy had uh, when I was doing activist work in the community where we just had one finger and we did like this. That was our handshake. So I keep mine simple. But yeah, they have all type of handshakes. Come on, gonna show you his handshake and a lot of other people, musicians, they show you their handshakes, yeah. It's just a greeting. Um, a greeting amongst us friends and just like like elsewhere people hug and some people, you know, actually kiss and stuff like that. Um we don't we don't kiss. Uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, it's just it's just a greeting. It's just just how we, we greet each other and, and that's all. Where I'm from, people greet each other like, you know, like like this, you know, just regular handshake hey, man, like this. Okay. All right. And then when I came to DC, people of course started doing this one. Like just like that. And then there's another one in D.C. where people go like this, and then you go back like this. You know what I mean? You go back a couple times, and then you, and then you put the thumb up, and you snap off the thumb. So, I mean, there's definitely different D, there's different D.C. handshakes, you know? In, in suburbs, it's just what I call the typical white man handshake, you know? <laughs> just like that, you know? And it's, and, it's, and it's very, like, cold, and it's very sterile and stuff, and it, and it actually that that handshake because it's you know I call it the white man handshake because it's so ubiquitous everybody uses that and it doesn't it doesn't actually make much of a statement about where you're from about your culture you know it doesn't have to just be a color thing it might originate it with black people of course but it still can be you know open to all nationalities if you're true to it and that's what you feel like you're doing and not saying i'm doing this just to imitate but this is the way i want to connect with you i want to show you you know i connect with you you know and i respect you and i you know i don't see nothing matter with a fist bump there was always some kind of hugging and shaking and and i didn't i never you know knew if i was supposed to do that or not if, if that meant if i tried to do that that was like you know, when your parents would come in and say, hey, man, what's happening? You know, you'd be like, hi. You know, I mean, I don't know. But eventually they started, you know, grabbing me and hugging me and shaking my hand the right way. And I'd be like, oh, OK, well, I guess if, if you're going to do that, I'll go along with it. But it was always kind of awkward. Um, I do this thing where I, I like I shake someone's hand. You know, you reach Everybody out. Everybody, you shake hands. If I meet someone, yeah, like just, you know, you stick your hand out and you shake hands. And it's, it's weird, but that's my thing. Shake hands. My son is a kicker uh, at his college, and uh, he kicked a field goal, and I was with my buddy, and we did the fist bump. So, secret sort of, uh, you know, if your son kicks a field goal, fist bump. That's our secret little did sign. You, yeah. Did you feel ashamed of it? No, it was a uh, no. It was happy, but it was you know, it was kind of just between us. I looked around and uh, 
No, I know fist bump's cool because it's hard to it's hard to fuck it up. You know what I mean? You you that's easy to do. When it was the shake and the hug, and the sort of hug, and the lean in. And that was, you know, I, I always, like, I don't know if I was getting that right or not, especially if you were doing it with a black dude. It was like, okay, uh, so uh, we down, right? You know, I mean, it was like, I don't, you know, it, it, it didn't really feel like it, you know. I just, I went along with it. I didn't want to refuse it. But obviously it was not really part of my culture. But, okay. Whatever, man. President Barack Obama entering the arena. Two summers ago, before the London Games of the Olympics, and it was to launch the teams and wish them well. And that we were playing the U.S. teams, men and women's basketball, were playing the Brazilian men's and women's team. And as you can imagine, security was unbelievable. And before the game, President Obama came and I went to shake his hand and he gave me like the cool handshake, a fist bump, and then a hug. And there's a, a funny photo, because when he came to give me a hug, I was like this. I didn't know, am I allowed to hug the president? If I hug the president, will Secret Service think I'm attacking him? What am I supposed to do? And literally, I'm like this as the president of the United States has given me a hug. And I thought that was just a very warm and beautiful thing for the president to do. There's a coolness about him that I think makes him, that makes him unique. I would argue that that Bill Clinton had a coolness about him as well. Um, and I would and I would even argue that Ronald Reagan had a coolness about him. There was a coolness of factor about Ronald Reagan as well. Clinton was was one of the first guys to play saxophone. I mean, he went on the senior hall show and played saxophone. That was that was for 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 a lot of Americans a very cool and very different thing. Obama has that you know ten times over. So you know, not both from left and right, but Americans tend to like presidents who are kind of cool, kind of cool people. Let's talk about U Street. That street out there, U Street, that was the first street for African Americans ever to have entertainment put together by slaves. And they would build all these beautiful buildings. Well, eventually, in 1958, Mr. Ali would come here. And he would open this up with Ben's. Uh, it's a symbol for African American history. Yeah, he could do that, that, that. He would actually go through the line. You know, he didn't sit down, he'd go through the line, and then he would eventually sit right there. That's where he would sit at, and he ordered a half smoke, and he paid with a $20 bill. Uh, he still calls up from time to time, and they uh, have stuff sent to the White House. President Sarkozy came in. Actually, his wife came in first, Carla, and uh, she would ask if we had room for the president, so I didn't know who she was talking about. So she told me it would be the president of France. So I sat her down, and we figured out the Secret Service in the back, and I told her when he got here, I was going to play a little film on the history of Ben Silibo and show it to her husband. Well, her husband would come in 15 minutes later, and he came went straight to the back, sat down. Uh, he would order uh, one half smoke with everything, and then he ordered another half smoke with nothing. He was on his way to the White House to see Barack Obama, so I would show him uh, the film in the back and give him a little history lesson. But I reminded him when he left, that he needed to shake hands and with everybody when he left because when he came he just went straight back he didn't say nothing to anyone so i didn't think politically that was a good thing to do so he, he did do it on his way back out he sh shook a few hands and when he got outside he gave carla a kiss on the cheek so i asked him to do it so no fist bump for president sarkozy no 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 not for him no 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 maybe another time another place you know
every handshake that is seen as a cool handshake has come from the black community and trickled on down. It starts with the high 10 and then the high five and then the slapping hands and then the soul shake. And once that trickles down to the white community, you got to come up with a new shake. And so I, I think we, 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 it finally progressed to the point where, uh, you know, mainstream America had, had embraced all the other ones. So you got to come up with a dap. There's nothing more uncool than the white middle class. Elements of, of, of the black experience have become very commercialized. I mean, look, when, when, when Snoop Dogg uh, is, uh, becomes a pitchman for corporate America, which he has, and, and, and Dr. Dre, uh, from NWA uh, becomes one of the largest, you know, most successful businessmen in, in the in the in the country. You know that speaks to the power of that culture, but also speaks to the power and the uniqueness of our country. One of the biggest problems that we've had as African Americans in this country is we let people kill our culture and our spirit. And we let people kill things that, that, that connect us, and if not just to black people, to people in general. You know, other people are not going to change who they are just to satisfy other people. And I think it's, it's important for people to know that you can be who you are. I think that's how some people might look at the president doing it that, but that's who he is. You know, that's who he is. Like people didn't understand. Uh, black power, the Olympics. When they put their hand up in the air at the Olympics. When he did the dap, he wasn't protesting, he was just being himself. I mean, does rap music belong to African Americans? We created that. <laughs> you know, does rock and roll belong to African Americans? We created that. You know, what belongs to us? You know, uh, does the maybe Frederick Douglass, this whole community, man, respected him, and to, to, to this day, Frederick Douglass was a free slave. All the presidents respected him, and he was known throughout the world. Uh, and he fought for the people, for justice and equality for all, but he also preached that you had to be a great citizen. A handshake and look at a person in the eyes, that's the mirror to your soul. So I'm, I'm sure he would shake hands. He shook hands with the best. And as you sit at his house, and then you turn around at this great house and you look at the hills and the mountains of Washington, D.C. and beyond. Um, this, is, this says a lot. He stood at the top of the mountain in the nation's capital. And uh, Frederick Douglass was a great man who dapped things up and he shook hands. And uh, yes, he would. Matter of fact, he would have shook hands with Obama. He would have shook hands with Reagan. He would have shook hands with anybody who was trying to do something. I had this dream, I'm serious, I had this dream that I meet President Obama, right? I meet him, right? He extends his hand to me. You know what I do? I hit him with this. Cause I ain't shaking that dude's hand. He done shook too many dudes' hands. I don't, I don't fuck with him like that. You know, y'all think he look good, he's a beautiful family and all that, cause he's black and all that, fuck all that. You know, dude is responsible for a whole lot of dirt. All around, I wouldn't shake his hand. He would be smiling with um, uh, um, President Bush shaking his hand. I ain't shaking dude's hand. You know what, I had another dream. I had a dream I met God. For real. I, I'm not, I'm not welling, man. I'm not selling a whoop take. I'm being real with y'all, man. I had a dream. I met God. You know what God looked like in my dream? He looked like Frederick Douglass. Y'all? And I was, I had went upstairs, and you know how, like, you're the attic, and it's shaped like, like that? I guess like a pyramid. <laughs> so I go upstairs, and then the side of the joint, like, open up like this, and then, you know, you hear that noise, like, ah, and, all the, and, all, and all the light, you know what I'm saying? And Frederick Douglass come out, God come out, and, he's, and he extends his hand. God extends his hand, and I touch his hand, I shake his hand, and I feel the energy. Like, this is real. Like, this, this, this can't be. I'm like, who are you? He's like, you know who I am. You know I'm, like, I'm like, are you serious? You know how you dreaming, and you know you dreaming? 
That's one of the joints. I'm dreaming. I know I'm dreaming. So is this real? Like, for real? I'm being God. And I'm shaking the dude's hand, but I feel it. And I feel it like it made it, the feeling from shaking his hand made it real. You know what I'm saying? And he said something like, you know, all that you all that you need, you have. Now go. You know what I'm saying? I woke up. I woke my lady up. And she was just as crazy as I am. I'm like, yo, wake up, wake up. Three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, wake up. She's like, what, what? I'm like, I just met God. <laughs> and she wake up. You know what I'm saying? And she crazy like me. So she wake up. She's like, oh, yeah, what do you say? <laughs> I said, I shook his hand. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's some real talk, man. Some real talk, man. Energy. That's what you. So be careful when you shaking hands with people that you don't. You know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's Isn't it? Late. That's why when y'all get when we get when we have a group and we get tight, we go in a circle. We make a circle. You know what I'm saying? All right. Respect. Boom. You all be over there, man. Come respect your elders, man. Come on, princess. I love your hair. Thank you for wearing natural. No track, no weed, no hair extension. All right. All right. One love, y'all. Def en concert secret, Beyond Doom. In a while, every other minute, eyes wide, Popeye, heavy on the spinach. Steady by his business and ready with an L pitch. Keep a bad bills niche like Danny Goose and Nils niche. No tricks, just shitload of spit and sneeze. G stacking up over rack and hitting fees. 